Welcome to the UCM Interface Bible Study, isang conversational, expository Bible study program hatid sa inyo ng UCM Interface, ang Young Adults Ministry ng Union Church of Manila. We do our best to study context and let Scripture speak for itself. Ang programa ito ay isang teaching ministry ng Union Church of Manila, a church of many nations committed to making disciples who are transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hello everybody! Ako si Gucci, isang commercial voice artist. Ako naman si Rainier, ang Young Adult Ministry Director ng Union Church of Manila. At ako naman si Gunnar, isang IT worker in Ortigas. Okay, sige. So welcome back sa ating pag-aaral ng Philippians. And uh, this is probably going to be our last episode of the year, ano? Grabe, umabot din tayo dito. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sa episode na ito, we're gonna go through um, Philippians 2, 12 to 18. Pero before we go through that, mag-announcement muna ako. Uh, two things lang naman. First is that para sa ating listeners, if you guys are looking for a chill na evening service in Makati pag Sunday, nais namin kayo imbitahan sa aming worship night. That would be 5.30pm in Union Church of Manila. That's Rada, Corner Legaspi, Makati City. And then second, itong Bible study program namin has been running for maybe around five years. Malit lang naman kaming ministry. Recently though, by God's grace, nakakuha kami ng napakagandang opportunity. A radio station picked us up and is going to air some of our episodes. And so by Jan 7, 2024, maririnig nyo na yung aming programa, at least our older episodes, sa 702 DZAS FEBC Radio. That's Woo! every Sunday wow. at 4.30pm. Praise God. Praise oh. God. Thank you DZAS for this opportunity. And hopefully nga, through our partnership, mas dumami pa ang aming maseservisyohan sa aming Bible study program. So yun. So that's a pretty big news. Yeah. <laughs> Kasi nga naman, hindi naman lahat hat nakakapakinig dun sa ating podcast That's na nangangailangan right. niya may wifi connection may mobile data yung iba talaga kailangan radyo mm-hmm. kaya ngayon lang tayo mapapalagay sa ibang platforma radyo naman early Christmas gift yun for us oh grabe so, magkaroon ng bagong platform so yun lang yung aming announcements okay so game tayo today for Philippians 2 12 to 18 pero before that ano ba naalala nyo dun sa discussion natin nung Philippians 2 5 to 11 just on the top of my head how did metrically opposite yung concepto ni Jesus ng what it means to be great versus how the world goes about greatness. No, mm. uh, The world kasi uh. is really focused on self-advancement whereas Jesus really is showing to his followers that the real way is through self-sacrifice and allowing God to lift you up. It's a bit strange siguro sa current milieu pero yun ang, uh, that's the calling for us Christians or those who see themselves as followers of Christ. No? Sabi nga nung uh, title ng previous episode natin, The Way Up is down, down in order to go up. Yung nga, yung sinasabi lagi nga ni Rainier dun, yung V trajectory. It's such a great reminder every day. Examining our lives, examining my life particularly, talaga bang trajectory ng buhay ko is this V trajectory? Yung nga, the way up is down. <laughs> or am I still trying to live like a, an I centered Yung I na, yung linya pataas na I'm still concerned about my own. Ako muna, akin. It's a easy to remember reminder. V or I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oo, tama. Mamimili ka eh. Letter V or letter I. Kasi kadalasan I, it's all about me. Ang ganda nito, no, yung binigay ni example ni Jesus dun sa V trajectory ng narrative. Ginamit niya talaga yung pinahiya siya dun sa crucifixion and then his life seemed to end in violence. At sa halip na mapahiya siya, oo, napahiya siya talaga sa marami but it's the Father who honored him and exalted him to the highest place. Tapos, o pagamat biktima nga siya ng violence, ang nakakagulat ginamit niya itong violence, no? he turned that into our healing. If you're going to meditate on the crucifixion of Jesus, napakaganda lang na ganito rin pala dapat yung pananaw natin sa buhay natin. Ganitong uri ng kwento. Uh, you know, as I mentioned in the past, no? Th- this is not just the story, the collective story of the church, but this should also be the individual story of every Christian. Ito yung hugis ng buhay natin. It should be the letter V. You have to keep that in mind. This yeah. is how Jesus brought our salvation. Yun ang kagalingan ni Jesus na babaliktad niya lahat. Mm. Kabaliktaran. Mm. Kabaliktaran ng lahat ng mundo. Anong hugis ng kwento ko, ng buhay ko? Anong hugis ng kwento ng mga simbahan natin? It should be the V trajectory. Okay, so now we'll go through Philippians 2, 12 to 18. And again, before we start, one last time this year, let's go through our reading in 3, 2, 1. 
Philippians 2, 12 to 18. So then, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, continue working out your salvation with awe and reverence. For the one bringing forth in you both the desire and the effort for the sake of his good pleasure is God. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God without blemish, though you live in a crooked and perverse society in which you shine as lights in the world by holding on to the word of life so that on the day of Christ, I will have a reason to boast that I did not run in vain nor labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice together with all of you. And in the same way, you also should be glad and rejoice together with me. All right. Pagkatapos ng nakwento na nga yung V trajectory ng story ni Jesus. Ito na yung kasunod ngayon, verses 12 to 18. Ang gusto kong mapansin natin dito, this section, this passage is tied very very closely to, syempre, the previous one. Right. Yung Christ him na tinatawag or yung V trajectory narrative ni Jesus. Yung pinag-usapan natin kanina. <laughs> yun, konektado yan, nakatali talaga yan At aatras ka pa. Kahit simulan mo dun sa chapter 1 verse 27 all the way to chapter 2 verse 4. I mean, yung sinasabi nga natin, di ba, na yung mga letter na to, wala namang mga number at mga chapter dati. It isn't wala. flowing letter lang talaga siya. So, we really have to check what was said before to be able to understand what's going on with the current thing that we're reading. Right, right. Usually, may central thesis yung thought niya eh. Uh-huh. So, hindi siya parang collection of sayings or teachings lang. Na pwede natin bunutin individually, right. di ba? Uh-huh. Yep, may flow. To understand number two, you have to go back to number one. That's correct. Yeah. Lahat yung yeah. konektado. So, mm-hmm. para mas maganda, no? isipin ulit natin, ano nga ba yung sa chapter 127 all the way to chapter 2 verse 4 and then 5 to 11. And napag-usapan na natin yung 5 to 11. Just a little review, yung sa 127 hanggang sa chapter 2 verse 4. Andito yung mga naalala niya, yung mga imageries na ginamit. Yung masundalo. Masundalo, magkakasama. Magkakasama. In step to- together, mga Oh, ganyan. lock and step. Ganyan, di ba? Pagpunta mo pa nga dun sa chapter 2 na, di ba? Ito na yung mga same mind. Same love. Yung mga ganon. Dun galing to, ha? Dun sa unity na may kita mo. Yung unity dun sa church. Yung oneness nila. Tapos dumugtong nga dun sa V trajectory story. Yun yun. Yeah, which is the model of the same love and the same mind and the same spirit that they have. Right. Yung story ni Jesus as the perfect model. Para mas malinaw dun sa mga Philippines Philippians na, ah, ito pala yun. Ah, ito na yung pinaka na dapat susundan. Oo, to achieve unity, same-mindedness, etc., etc. Dapat katulad tayo ni Jesus. Kaya ang unang-unang connective, at least sa NIV, ewan ko dyan sa mga translations nyo. Sa ESV, therefore, sa Net Bible is so then. Pare-pareho din naman ang idea yung therefore. So, yun nga, oh, na-establish na natin na konektado dapat ito. So, ngayon, sabi niya, my dear friends, o oh, napaka lambing, no? Nagbibigay siya ngayon kasi ng exhortation. Ang tanong muna, ito kaya ang mga exhortations ay parang mga general moral exhortations o sa palagay nyo meron siyang is aiming at a specific concern. At the very least, I think Paul is speaking to the situation of the Philippians kasi sila yung target audience ng letter. Eh. At ano nga ba yung situation nila? Di ba? Humaharap sila sa persecution. Isa yun, di ba? Tapos later sa chapter 3, ma-identify dyan kung sino talaga yung nag-oppose sa kanila. In fact, na nakakagula dyan, syempre, spoiler alert, 
Actually, kapwa din nila eh. Christian Jews. Ah, ganun? Yes. Oh, Spoiler. <laughs> At dahil humaharap sila sa ganitong klaseng opposition, ganti yung circumstances nila, and there's, there's persecution, tapos kung sino pa sana yung aasahan mo na susuporta sa'yo, actually, yun ang kalaban mo. So, ano ngayon dapat? Sabi ni Paul. So, sabi niya, and my dear friends, napakalambing, no? As you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but not Now, much more in my absence. Hanggang doon muna tayo. Ano yung encouragement na nakita niya doon? Just as you have always obeyed. Masunurin daw si Philippian Church. Uh-oh. At hindi lang yun. Not only in my presence, but even more in my absence. So, Ayun. hindi na kailangan ng bantay. Ayan, din si Paul. Pagpaayos tayo. Ayun. Naisa buhay na nila, kumbaga. Ayan, maganda yung punto ninyo. Diba? Kasi in yung past obedience at saka yung... Present. Present. Oh. So nakakarinig siya na ito yung ginagawa nila kahit, wala, kahit nasa ibang lugar na si Paul. Okay, bakit mahalaga itong affirmation na to? Kasi nga, kung mga sundalo yung mga to, ano ba nangyari dun sa kanilang commander? Nahuli. Nahuli. Na- Kulong. Nakakulong, di ba? E di siyempre, kung nakakulong yung commander nyo, madidishearten kayo, di ba? Pero hindi ganun si Paul eh. Ina-affirm niya. Tuloy lang. Tuloy lang. Ang maganda sa mga to, kahit wala si commander, tuloy lang sila. They're still obeying the Lord Jesus. They're faithful full to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Ang maganda din dito, alam nyo, hindi niya pinapalakad yung mga churches na parang kulto. <laughs> yung centered sa kanya? Yes. Hindi ganun si Paul because he's always pointing to Jesus. So kahit mawala siya o ano man yung sitwasyon niya, they're still obedient to Jesus because it's not dependent on His presence. Mm-hmm. Ako ang isang naisip ko dito is how I deal with my child. No? May ginagawa siyang tama, I have to affirm the correct behavior kasi the message that I want to convey is that you're doing the right thing and you just keep on doing it. To build yung assurance sa kanya na even if I don't see it, I am happy with what he's doing. And also, since na-mention nga ni Gunnar, actually, na-mention nyo yung idea ng pagiging tatay, eto kami ni Gunnar were fathers, diba? And ito yung goal. Yes. Diba? As a father, yes. wow! <laughs> Ayoko na magsaway. <laughs> Diba, just imagine, diba, yung the joy that we would feel na makita namin yung children namin having Christ-like values, obedience, lifestyle, uh-huh. loyalty uh-huh. to uh-huh. Jesus uh-huh. na hindi dahil pinipilit namin or something. Uh-huh. Hindi dahil nakatanghod ka at uh, right. nakabantay sa ano nila. Oo. Uh-huh. 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 Andyan si Papa. Kaya nga natin magpakabait. Behave uh-huh. tayo. Hindi, kasi talagang uh-huh. namunga yung seeds. Kung baga, totoo sa kanila. Yeah, lalo pa nga na parang minsan may pinapahiwatig si Paul D. Ito eh. It's about the possibility that he will actually die. Kaya ngayon pa lang, ina-affirm na niya because without strong leadership, maraming pwede mangyari eh. Fear can take over. There could be disunity in the body of Christ. Ibig sabihin, mukhang tama yung pagpapalaki ni Paul sa mga to. Kung isipin natin si Paul yung tatay nila. Magaling siyang tatay. So dun pa lang eh, ina-affirm na niya. Not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. And then he said, eto na, yung medyo nakakalito na statement ni Paul. Right. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I, I read from the NIV. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Your own? Yes, V. Your own. Right. Napaka-popular na ginagamit kasi yung word na salvation. Na, itong salitang ito, lilinawi natin. Kasi pag sinabing salvation, anong naiisip nyo? Personal salvation, forgiveness of sins. No, eternal salvation ba? Oh, ah, yeah. yun. Okay. Uh, so, saan kumupunta ang kalulong? luwa mo sa yun, dulo. Parang gano'n, no? So, yun agad ang pumapasok sa atin. Wala sa ating nagbabasa ng NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version. Ang ginamit niya doon, deliverance. Ah, okay. May subtle difference yung deliverance sa salvation. Meron. Kasi nga, itong salita na to, yung pag sinabi mong soteria in Greek, hmm. soteria, Deliverance salvation. eh, sa ano? Hindi palaging ibig sa sabihin chapter niya, one. eternal salvation. Hindi palagi. Bibigay tayo ng mga ilang examples. Tsaka, this is something that we discussed. So, one Chapter 1, 19. Uh-huh. I know that this will turn out for my deliverance. That's correct. Kasi sa atin, medyo na-hijack na natin yung ibig sabihin ng salvation. Kapag sinabi salvation, we right away associate that with personal salvation or the end time salvation, the eschatological salvation. Pero hindi nga palaging ganun ang gamit ng soteria. Pwede siyang rescue. Okay. Deliver ako, na-save ako from danger. Pwede rin kasing ganun 
ganun eh. Pero, ang common kasi sa atin na interpretation dito, putahan muna natin yung popular interpretation. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Katalasan, sinasabi natin na, oh, this is your personal salvation. So, dapat pagtrabahuhan mo yung ano mo, yung kaligtasan mo, ganun. Doon ngayon nagkakaroon ng issue because of this phrase, work out. Yung argument ng iba, well, iba ang work out. Hindi naman ibig sabihin daw ng work out that's different from work, work for. Uh-huh. Because we believe that salvation is not something that you earn, but it's a gift, sabi. That's right. So yung work out, una, it's not a verb of earning, but one of making. Iba yung nuance. You're not earning it, but you're making your salvation, meaning ang common na rinig kong interpretation is it refers to your lifestyle and obedience. That's how you work it out. Right. How you work uh-huh. out your salvation is how you demonstrate that in your life. Parang express. Ayan. Okay. So express. Because you are saved from sin, you are now saved uh-huh. for uh-huh. specific responsibilities for the works that God wants, for the mission. Right. You are now right. ambassadors. So that's the more common interpretation. You work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Meaning, this is about your personal salvation. Para meron tayong kaunting issue dito kapag ang pagkaisip natin dun sa salvation dito ay personal salvation. All right? Okay. Now, this is not my original view. Wala naman akong original ideas. Anyway, mahilig lang ako magbasa. <laughs> Kala ko ikaw nakaisip ng lahat ng ito. <laughs> Wala. <laughs> Ito, napulot ko lang to dun sa commentary ni Michael Bird at saka ni Nietzsche Gupta. Gustong-gusto ko talaga itong mga theologians na to. Yung mga listeners natin, hanapin nyo sila. Ang dami mapupulot dito kay Michael Bird at kay Nietzsche Gupta. Ngayon, meron silang sinabi dito sa commentary nila parang, Teka lang, bakit personal salvation agad? Hindi kaya napaka-abrupt considering na hindi naman niya ang pinag-uusapan na bigla mo nalang pinasok yung usapin tungkol sa personal salvation. Talaga, baka naman merong ibang ibig sabihin ito. Tulad nga, yung sa translation ng New Revised Standard Version, hindi naman salvation ang ginamit, kundi deliverance. Which now harkens us back to chapter 1 verse 19. Ano nga ba yung sinabi sa chapter 1 verse 19? For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Okay, dun sa previous episode natin, pinaliwanag natin yan. That here, Paul could not be talking about his future salvation. Kasi ang tinutukoy niya dito yung kanyang current situation, Nakulong nakakulong siya. siya. Alright, sabi niya that it might turn out for my own deliverance. Pero, kung matatandaan niyo, hinugot niya to eh, somewhere. This language was taken from Job. That's almost an exact, kumbaga parang kinopya talaga ni Paul, yung lingwahe ni Job dito. This is in Job chapter 13 verse 16. This will be my salvation that the godless shall not come before him. Dito sa, sa context ni Job, lahat ng ito nangyayari sa akin ngayon will eventually make sense. Uh, may crisis siya oh, eh. May crisis kasi siya. It will turn out for his own deliverance but in the sense of things will work out. I will be vindicated. Well, yeah. Vindication or something. It has the sense of things will work out according to God's will. So it's all for the best. I'll be vindicated and things will make sense. Walang masasayang dito. So, kung ganun nga, ang sense na pagkagamit ni Paul dun sa 119, pwede rin kasi na ito rin yung sinasabi mm. ni Paul dito. In light of everything that's happening to them, wala si Paul absent, may persecutors, merong opposition na nangyayari, at lahat yan, pwede kasi makasira sa church. Right. Potentially makakasira sa kanila. But sabi niya, no, continue to work out your own deliverance. But in light of what he said in 119, that it will all work out in the end. So, wag kayo magi give up. God's plans will happen. Matutuloy pa matutuloy yung plano niya. Parang ganun? Oo. Uh-uh. And I think it fits better the flow of the ideas previously in 127 and then also in chapter 2 all the way to verse 11. So, parang sinasabi ba dito ni Paul is work out your salvation. Ibig sabihin, keep on doing it. Maintain it because that will be 
the key to your deliverance or understanding everything that's going on. Now mm. it doesn't make sense to you now, now, but it will in the future. So figure it out yourselves. Kung baga siya sabi ni Paul, ako yun ang ginagawa ko, di ba? So one nineteen, yun yung confidence niya. It will all turn out for my deliverance. But in the context of Job thirteen, so ano yung work out na part? So what are the Philippians expected to work out? It's more in the sense of figuring out. Kung baga sinabi ni Paul, no? let me quote yung pagkaka paraphrase ni NJ Gupta at ni Michael Bird. I Paul have figured out how to trust in God's own way of working things out for the best and now I call upon you to figure it out for yourselves in your situation right given your situation and all the challenges that you're facing currently figure it all out kayo makakaalam niyan so in a way binibigyan pa rin niya ng independence itong mga to yeah. hindi lang siya basta nagdidikta parang you have my example you have Jesus example now figure out how those would apply to will you. work out for you oh yeah yeah and you know figure it out yung paano yung nag-apply sa buhay niyo leading you into your own deliverance from this situation and i think it is relatable even to us today kasi every generation there's always something that we have to struggle with mm-hmm. 50 years ago the world was very different 10 years ago the world was very uh-huh, different but uh-huh. still we're all still called to loyalty and obedience and we just have to figure it out specifically kung ano nang kailangan natin gawin uh-huh. and obey because it will turn out in the end yes okay so we just presented two views yung isa yung more common or more popular eto naman is just an alternative view but me personally mas gusto ko yung number two kasi mas pasok siya dun sa tema mas consistent lang siya mas consistent. sa text in general you know? uh-huh. yes uh-huh. yes so pero alam nyo naman magkakaiba-iba minsan ng views but please this is not a hill I want to die on uh-huh. wag tayong magkaaway-away ng dahil dito so just presenting two views <laughs> right, not right. saying that one is wrong right, particularly right. Yeah. we we'll let the listeners work out for themselves work it out <laughs> <laughs> you work it out <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's let's move on. Kaya sabi pa niya, with fear and trembling. Bakit may fear and trembling pa rin? Uh-huh. Oh, well, uh-huh. kasi like sa akin, dito sa net, awe and reverence. Kasi Ayun. I think, ah, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, kasi the fear yun. of the Lord is not takot na parang mumu eh. Di ba? <laughs> parang ganun eh. You're it's, not going to run away. Oh, it's the, yung encountering something great. In the face of greatness, biglang you're trembling. Right, yung ganun right. klase. And I think, yeah, nga, the fear of the Lord, yan yung the awe and reverence of God. Yes, when you talk about reverence for God or fear of God rather, ang palaging ine-emphasize dyan is your creaturely status before your awesome creator. Yeah. Yung ganun. <laughs> so may, may distance tayo yung ganun sa kanya. Uh-huh. With fear and trembling, with reverence and awe. Because you just have to keep trusting in God. Siya naman kasi, or yung will lang naman niya ang gusto nating matupad eh. That's why, you know, you have to keep working it out, figuring it out. With fear and trembling, trusting that in the end, it will all work out. For it is God, verse 13, who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. I think mas pasok yung verse 13 dun sa second view. Na uh, ito lahat ay for His good purpose. Si God pa rin yung may empower in obedience. Yon. And uh, the end goal is, the reason why God empowers us is because our obedience ultimately gives Him glory. That's right. Tsaka That's yung right. encouragement na hindi to, bahala na kayo ah. Basta sumunod lang kayo ah. Oh, 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 hindi pa rin sila oh, oh, oh. nag-iisa. God has empowered us, given us the desire and also the energy the power to do it. Right, right. Itong maganda kay God sa ama natin. I think it's just in His nature to invite His people to participate in His work. Mm-mm. Katulad sa Genesis chapter 1, the reason why He created us, partners pa rin tayo. Ginagamit pa rin niya tayong partners. Ganito pa rin. He won't abandon you. He won't iiwang ka niya sa devices mo. No, He works present. For it is God who works in you. Mystery yun, no? Kasi kahit tayo yung pampabagal, oh, He still well, chooses uh, to work with us. Nay. Nako, kung ang pasensya ng Diyos yung pasensya ko, ah, wala na. <laughs> okay, so, you know, this working out or figuring out, making sense of everything that's happening, hindi ka mag-isa dyan because God is working in you. 
collective yung you dito plural ha working in the church us together ayun na naman okay okay wag muna tayong maging individualistic dito ha kasi sa context na to talagang this partnership working together we're all moving together as one empowered by God energized by God for a specific goal to fulfill his good, good purpose. purposes okay so siyempre binigyan na niya ng unang exhortation niya sabi niya work out your Or deliverance with fear and trembling. Number two, sabi niya, so verse 14, what's the next command or exhortation? Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Wow. At bawal magreklamo? Ay, bawal. <laughs> Itong lingwahe na to, grumbling, arguing, may pinaguhugutan si Paul dito eh. Ito yung tungkol sa wilderness wandering ng mga Israelites. Right. Ah, I see, ah, I see. Diba? Ah. Doon siya humuhugot dito. Mm-hmm. Basahin natin tong Exodus chapter 16, verse 7. Actually, mahaba hanggang verse 12 pa yan. Sige nga. Uh, verse 7, And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord because He has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against Him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord. Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked towards the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Parang daming mention ng grumbling. Oh, ah. daming pesos ginamit. Ano? <laughs> I've never seen so much grumbling <laughs> in a few verses. <laughs> in a few verses na paulit-ulit yan ang mga technique para ma-impress din sa reader. Ganon din kadami yung grumbling ng Israel siguro. Na. <laughs> Bakit pa sila nag-grumble nung panahon na yun in the wilderness when they were in the wilderness? They were suffering some adversity kasi on the way to uh-uh. the promised the land. Way. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Nagagalit sila sa Diyos kasi napaka-inconvenient daw ng buhay nila. Talaga? <laughs> Pero alam mo, whenever I read that part of the Exodus story, it, nawi-weirduhan talaga ako dyan na parang hindi mo nyo ba nakita yung na Napakaraming miracles na ginawa ng Panginoon sa inyo. Nasa Egypt pa lang kayo. Hindi ano? lang yun. Wala nang kasing hihirap pa sa buhay ng isang alipin. Tama. Kaya talagang nagsisinungaling talaga ito mga to. Ewan ko ha, hindi pa uso yung salitang gaslight nun pero ginagaslight nila si Lord eh. Hmm. Kasalanan mo to eh. Pumbira, binigyan ka ng freedom. Ang dami pang pangako sa'yo na i-deliver naman and they were all delivered anyway. Pero nagre-reklamo ka pa. Ito ngayon yung warning ni Paul, na teka lang, sabi niya, Dear friends, <laughs> Friend! Huwag <laughs> lang kayong katulad nitong Israelites when they were wandering in the desert. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Isipin natin, situation nila. Pwedeng mawala na si Paul, mawala na sila ng leader, pero buti na lang, obedient pa rin sila. Mm-hmm. However, maaring hindi palaging ganyan. Given the fact that they're currently facing persecution, opposition, so pwedeng lumala. Sa ngayon, parang okay-okay pa. Pero pwedeng lumala ang situation nila and that can result in grumbling or arguing. They're grumbling against God, no? parang ganun, di ba? Or maybe even Paul. Later, there's a possibility they would do that. Pero yung arguing, it could be amongst themselves. Bakit nangyayari ito? Itong arguing na to, itong mga bickering na to, lalo dun sa sitwasyon nila. Feeling ko nangyayari yan even in normal situations, normal groups, when you lose sight of the end goal. Okay. Kung hindi na kayo nag-think together as a team, you start pointing uh, the faults. Mm, mm-hmm. Sometimes the goal changes to, I need to make myself as good as possible para sa dulo is ako ang right, ng promotion. Right. So those kinds of things uh, usually pop in when ang mindset ng team members is no longer the original goal of the project. No longer the V trajectory. No longer the V trajectory, especially if they are under outside threat at saka pressure. So sabihin nila, eh kung nakinig ba naman kayo sa akin, hindi tayo sana nagkaganito. O nangyayari ito kapag ka, nagkakaproblema na yung mm-hmm. project, delayed kayo, doon ang tendency right. magsimula yung mga ganitong disputes. At ganun din sa church, lalo kung meron silang 
outside pressure. O ayan, kita nyo nangyari tuloy. Nabis to yung mga activities natin. O tingnan ninyo, ayan tuloy, na-confiscate na yung estate ni ganito. I'm just giving examples, but the point here is, there could be someone na bigla na lang magmamalaki, magmamataas. Eh, ako lang marunong dito eh. Eh lahat naman kayo, walang kaalam-alam. Tingnan nyo, napapahamak yung church natin. Kung nakikinig lang sana kayo sa akin, okay pa tayo. Hindi na siya V trajectory. Pa superstar na kasi. Superstar ka na. There's empty conceit. Then there's uh, posturing. Doon mawawala yung unity in Christ. Na sinasabi na ni Paul doon pa lang sa simula ng letter. Kaya, just say no to these attitudes and habits. Blaming others or sometimes self-pity. Minsan ganun din eh. At ngayon, kapag nangyayari lahat ito, ano mangyayari dun sa church? Hindi siya magiging effective. Hindi. They're not coming together anymore. They're not helping each other anymore. They're not supporting each other anymore. Nagkakanya-kanya na. Magsastagnate, tapos magwawatak-watak. Ang masakit dyan, magwe-veer off yung church dun sa purpose, which is yung good works na gustong ipagawa sa kanina right. ng God. Magwe-veer off yung church from giving glory to God. Yes, because of the disunity. At kapag may disunity, sigurado meron isa dyan o dalawa dyan, whoever will want to elevate himself. Eh, hindi pala ganun ang design ng church. The more that the church is under attack or pressure, lalong umiigting dyan yung values nila sa, no, for example, humility, yung V trajectory ni Jesus. Mas lalo pa dapat makita yon. Kaya ang sabi niya in verse 15, So that you may be blameless and pure, children of God without blemish, though you live in a crooked and perverse society in which you shine as lights in the world. Para maging blameless and pure, children of God, particularly in what kind of setting or culture? In the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. Oy, parang yun lang, ano? <laughs> wala nagbago. <laughs> yun na nga eh. Kahit ano pang generation yan, crooked pa rin lahat ng generations, you know? Pero, kailangan pa rin, you need to stand out. You have to be different. But not standing out in terms of being proud. Or notorious ka. Or notorious, <laughs> yan, yeah. notoriety. But being blameless and pure. And shining as lights in the world. Mm-hmm. Ang naalala ko dito, yung mission ng people of God, which is to be a light for the nations. Right. Basahin natin Isaiah 49 verse 6. He says, Is it too insignificant a task for you to be my servant, to reestablish the tribes of Jacob and restore the remnant of Israel? I will make you a light to the nations, so you can bring my deliverance to the remote regions of the earth. A light to the nations. Yan yung vocation ng Israel. And of course, alam nyo naman, ngayon, church. church. Which of course Uh is made up of Jews and Gentiles. So nakikita nyo yung how the blessing to Israel was amplified at naging church na ang naging light to the nations, light to the Gentiles. Na? Ngayon, itong metaphor na to, or rather simile, like stars in the sky, this will also remind us of yung Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Okay, like stars. You will be light in a very dark world. Kumbaga, you know, yun, yun ang gustong sabihin ni Paul dito, no? That you will shine like stars in the sky. Okay, kung isusuma nyo yan or summarize that, ano ang gustong ipaalala ni Paul sa kanila na instead of grumbling and arguing, you have to remember who you are. Especially in the eyes of the world. Okay, in the warped and crooked generation or in the eyes of the world, you have to keep that identity. Oh, siguro ano, kaya may reminder si Paul dito kasi madali naman kasing mag-stand up for your principles if everything is going good. But the situation that they are in is Ay. not so good and may even get worse. That's why Paul really gave this reminder. Yeah. Oo. Grabe. Ang pinag Ugatan ito pala, hindi kayo magiging ganito. You can't be blameless, you can't be pure, you can't be this witness to the world, you can't be light in the darkness if you grumble and argue. Kasi ang laki ng trabaho eh. Tapos watak-watak kayo, tapos nagpapasikatan kayo, hindi pwede. Kasi pag may pressure from outside, may threats, yun ang unang-una nangyayari. They will fall away or they will scatter. Self-preservation. Yun ang mauna. Very good point, Gunnar. Self-preservation. Kabaliktaran talaga eh sa ginawa ni Christ. Eh. Oo. Oh, oh. Kasi nga, pag may threat, 
ay isasalba ko na sarili ko. Pero hindi, hindi pa rin. And then, let's continue. Verse 16. Holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Gagawin nyo to, no? You will shine like stars, your light in the darkness. How? By holding on to the word of life. Holding on to your convictions as a believer, especially in a world that opposes the values of our Lord. Yun yung susi. So, babalik ka pa rin dun sa mga doktrina ninyo. Babalik ka sa scripture. Right. To the word of life. The word of God brings life to your community and to the world. And then, I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. Why did Paul say this? Kasi medyo ano tayo sa boasting eh. Hindi maganda yung ating uh, connotation. Connotation. Uh, 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 uh. But why did he say this? I think yung katulad nung sinabi ni Gucci kanina, no? As a father, one once you get to the point where your children are, you can be proud to bring them outside of the home. Pag iniwan mo sila with other people, you know, hindi ka mapapahiya. You know, that's really, a, in a way, a proud moment for you. So, ibig sabihin, all the stress no, that you endured, all the pain, all the work you did in order to bring your children up, hindi siya in vain kasi they grew up into decent people, into God-loving mm-hmm, adults. Mm-hmm. Siyempre, hindi, hindi naman ikaw ang ano nun, ang may credit talaga nun kasi sila naman yung nagiging mabuti. Pero as their parent, as their mentor, to be able to guide them, mold them into that point. Hindi siya pride na parang very self-promoting, pero pride na nasa background while your children shine. So I think it may be similar to what Paul is saying here. At saka may direction yung boasting. Hindi naman to self-boasting, di ba? Right, ano yung right. sinabi ni Paul sa 2 Corinthians chapter 11? Verse 30. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. And then chapter 12, verse 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Okay, ito yung context ng boasting palagi ni Paul. He defined what his boasting is about. Ano yung unang inadmit niya? Weakness. Weakness. And because he's weak, the power of God is made perfect in his weakness. So is this about him? No, no. 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 I mean, yes, there's that sense na a father happy to see his children grow up. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, alam rin ni Paul na ang nagbigay ng desire and power for them is not Paul. No. It's God. That's right. God That's was right. the one who did it. And so, yung boast niya is... Look what God has done. Yes. I was yes. a little part of this, but in the end, it was God who did this. At yung boasting niya, Samuel, on the day of Christ, when you say on the day of Christ, what does that mean? Judgment. Yes. On the day when Jesus, the King and Judge, returns. Parang ini-imagine ni Paul, eh, when I face my Messiah, when I meet him face to face, masaya ako. Mm-hmm. Kasi marami ako ipipresent sa kanya eh. Oo, oh, hindi ko sinayang yung buhay ko. Oh, parang ganun. Right. Kaya sabi niya that I did not run or labor in vain. Hindi nasayang yung effort. Walang nasayang dito. Lahat ito, may saysay. For the glory of God. Kaya nga kung pwede po ba nga siyang ibalik ulit dun sa sinabi ni Paul kanina, no, sa verse 12 na, Continue to work out your deliverance with fear and trembling. In the end, everything will make sense. And this is how Paul is doing it. Ayan no, lahat ng tinatrabaho ko to, alam ko. On the day of Christ, walang sayang dito. Walang tapon, walang, walang tapon, tapon dito. Walang tapon, walang tapon dito. And so, verse 17. So, 17, 18. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice together with all of you. And in the same way, you also should be glad and rejoice together with me. Okay, may ginamit siyang lingwahe dito ha. Being poured out like a drink offering. Itong imagery na ginamit niya dito, it echoes something in the Old Testament, yung mga drink offerings. In particular, yung Numbers chapter 15. Siguro kahit yung verse 10 na lang. And you shall offer for the drink offering half a hin of wine, as a food offering, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Ito kasi itong drink offering na to is just in addition to other offerings that were mentioned in Numbers 15 verses 1 to 9. Panghuli yung nasa listahan yung drink offering. It's an offering. He is likening his life, his whole life, his whole being like a drink offering. Poured out. Poured out. 
Which Binuos. is the same language that was used dun sa emptying yes. himself. Dun kay Jesus. Uh-uh. Dun sa last episode natin. Who emptied himself. Who poured himself out. He poured himself out. Ganun din yung ginawa ni Paul. Ibig sabihin, wala siyang itinira. <laughs> <laughs> Ganun yung tingin niya sa buhay niya. No? Buhos na buhos. Na parang sacrifice. Pero hindi ito yung sacrifice na parang sin sacrifice. But maganda tong offering na to eh. Itong mga food offerings na to. Hindi naman ito yung mga tipong... Hindi for atonement no. for sins no. or repentance no hindi naman ganun eh parang thanksgiving oo kasi ito yung inuto sa Israelites noon eh sabi pag tungtong nyo sa promised land which I'm giving us a home then you will give this food offerings to God kasama nyo mga olive oil mga mixed flour with whatever halo-halo no? aroma pleasing to God nga daw eh. yun nga eh so iba no tsaka yung sense na it's a celebratory kind Yan. of offering okay that's a good word it's offering as in we're so great grateful, we would love uh-huh. to express our joy. Mm-hmm. Which is what Paul was saying here, diba? Na rejoice together with all of you. Pero ang ganda nung pagtingin yung assessment or yung view ni Paul sa buhay niya, it's an offering, diba? On the sacrifice and service coming from your faith. Anong pagkakasabi dun sa mga Bibles niya? Ulitin ko lang yung verse 17. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith. I am glad and rejoice with you all. Dito sa NIV, service coming from your faith. So it's like I'm offering in the same way that you guys are offering. We're offering together. Tama ba? Yes. Kumbaga, it's a co-offering. Ako at saka kayo. Yung service nilang mga Philippians that's coming from their faith. At saka yung buhay ko. Okay. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng ito... Isang package lang siya, lahat ito ino-offer kay God for His pleasure. For His pleasure and therefore it's not for nothing. That's why He said, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. Medyo hindi normal ang joy or rejoicing na response, na emotional response sa sitwasyon nila. Bakit kaya? Bakit rejoice? Eh kasi nga si Paul laging eyes on the prize eh. Very long view siya. So ang ending kasi nito yung glorification. Like Jesus, in the end, Jesus was glorified by God. So tayo, kahit na mababa ang sitwasyon natin, kumbaga nasa ilalim tayo ng V ngayon, in the end, God will exalt us and glorify us. Yo. Oh, and then also, as we discussed on sa verse 12, yung deliverance, na matutuloy at matutuloy yung plano ni God. And He will be glorified. His plans will happen. It's all for His good purpose. So, so lahat to, it's a momentary suffering and eventually it will turn out well. So we can rejoice in that. Kaya ang tingin ko no, kay Paul, talagang memoryadong memoryado niya yung V trajectory at saka pinamumuhay niya. Kaya ganito siya. In the end, rejoice. Rejoice pa rin. May celebration pa rin because we'll all triumph in the end. And it's not because of us, but we will just participate both in the sufferings of Jesus and also in His exaltation. Right. We will also participate in His exaltation. Kaya ang ganda dun sa, nung patapos na yung letter ni Paul, sa Romans naman. Romans 16 verse 20. The God of peace will quickly crush Satan under your feet. Okay. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Ang ganda, no? Naalala nyo to ko sang galing. Will crush under... Genesis. Genesis 3.15. Diba? There was this conflict between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. That's right. And that yeah. conflict will keep going. Pero may ending pala siya. Because even in Genesis 3.15, it says... He will crush your head. Yes, yes. So tingnan ninyo... Tignan niyo mag-isip si Paul. You know, this is the only time the language in Genesis 3.15 was ever used. Again, hindi yung ginamit sa Old Testament and only once in the New Testament. It's right there. Wow. In Romans 16 verse 20. Pero tingnan niyo, who crushed the head of the serpent? Who did? According to Romans 16.20. Jesus. God. The God of violence. Peace. Oh, wow. The God of peace, not of violence. Because he did it how? Through violence? No. Siya pa nga yung biktima ng violence eh. Pero tingnan nyo, kasi sabi dito, under your feet. Sino yung your? The church. church. The church, right. Nag-participate lang tayo. God will crush Satan and he will use the church as his feet. It's still God who crushed Satan. Yeah. But we simply participate in that victory. We share in his victory. Grabe, kilabot. <laughs> Wala tayong ginawa eh. Nakiapak na lang tayo. Nung crush na. O yan, game kayo naman. <laughs>
pero ganito yung perspective ni Paul. Alam na alam ni Paul, ito yung ending. Kaya rejoice. And I think that's the encouragement of obedience and loyalty and faithfulness yeah. in light of a crooked and perverse society. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's so easy to just give up and True. just tapo na lang to. Ano bang point ng lahat ng to? And sinasabi ni Paul, may point ang lahat ng to. May point. Uh-huh. May point. May point ang <laughs> lahat ng to. <laughs> <laughs> may point. Meron. You might not see it in your life, pero may point siya because all of history will end with God's victory. Kaya nga si Paul, kahit alam niya may possibility na baka yung pagkakakulong ko na to, this is it. But who cares? This world is not about me. And even after I die, the story is yes. ongoing. And I know how this story will end. And I love its ending. And I'm just a small part of this beautiful narrative of the meta-narrative of Scripture. Wow. Whew. So rejoice. rejoice. So there, that ends our discussion on Philippians 2, 12 to 18. And again, to our listeners, rejoice. Victorious ang ating king. And maybe we won't see it in our life. Maybe we'll suffer. Maybe we'll die. But one day, in this big story that we are just a little, 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 little part of, God is going to crush the serpent and bring about the new heavens, the new earth. And we are going to look forward to that day. Uh, it's going to be a great ending. Yes, so, yes. thank you so much. Till the next episode, see you and God bless. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the UCM Interface Bible Study Podcast. If you want to know more about our ministry, check out the UCM Interface Facebook page or email us at ucminterface at gmail.com. Join us at Union Church of Manila, Rada Corner Legaspi, Makati City. Thanks and God bless.